Now we're going to go over the steps that I asked you to complete, and I'll do this reasonably quickly because these are actually all things that we've seen before. I'm just going to redo them for you. Here's our data set, and the first thing I've asked you to do is see if you can perform factor analysis. And the way we do that is we go to Analyze, Dimension Reduction, Factor. Our 12 items. Under Descriptives, we ask for KMO and Anti-Image, and that's it. We hit OK. And we see very quickly that our KMO criteria is fine. It's above 0.6, it's 0.9. The Bartlett's test of sphericity is fine. It's significant at below 0.05. And if we scroll down here to the anti-image correlation matrix, we can see maybe hard to do so in the video, but all of the diagonals are in fact above 0.5. They're actually all above 0.9, suggesting that all the values can be included and we can proceed with factor analysis. As to the number of factors, we can scroll down to this total variance explain table and we quickly see that there are two factors in this data set. The two factors account for 62% of the variance, which is pretty good. It says that, look, 12 factors is a lot for us to juggle, but if we instead reduce that down to two factors, we can still explain 62% of the variation, which is pretty good because conceptually it's way easier to think about two variables than it is to think about 12. So now we can proceed with running factor analysis properly. We go back to Analyze, Dimension Reduction, Factor. Under Extraction, we need to specify how many factors, and we'll just actually leave it as the default, which is the based on eigenvalue option. And when the eigenvalue is greater than one, it'll, it'll output a factor. In this case, it'll have two. Under Rotation, we ask for Varimax. Under Scores, we ask it to save the variable regression outputs. And under Options, we ask it to sort by size. And we hit OK. So we scroll down to the rotated component matrix we see over here, and we find that there are a number of variables that correspond with the first factor, these variables here, and another bunch of variables that correspond to the second factor. You might notice that these three variables are actually somewhat related to both factors, but the way we'll do it is we'll just say this is a larger value than this, and so this question will live in factor one, and we do that for each one. And now we want to name these factors. And so we think, well, what do these questions have in common? And I think they have something to do with the quality of the content of the course, as compared to these questions down here, which have something to do with the professor feedback or interaction with students, which are two different dimensions. And it's really nice, because now I can say, instead of thinking about 12 things that students rate, they're really responding to two things. How good is the content? and how good is the faculty feedback or interaction. What I want to do is rename my values in the data set to make my life easier because fact one and fact two is hard to remember. Instead, under variable view, for fact one, I'm going to say this refers to content, and I'll do the same thing in the label, content, and this refers to feedback. And this is feedback. Now, if your labels aren't exactly mine, that's fine, as long as they share a similar spirit. So now we want to use these new factors to perform a cluster analysis. The way we do that is we go to Analyze, Classify, Hierarchical Cluster. To do this, we select just our two variables, Content and Feedback. Under Plots, we ask for the dendrogram. And under Method, we make sure we use Ward's method. And we hit Continue and OK. We scroll down. And we find our dendrogram. Now, it's a little bit difficult to read on the screen like this. One small trick for you is if you right click and you hit Copy Special, select Image and hit OK, you can actually put this image into something like Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, doesn't matter. I'm going to paste that in there. And you can resize it just using the sizing tool to something a lot more manageable. So let's make the height 8 and the width something like 6. And if I do that, it's a lot easier to read this dendrogram. And it becomes very clear that there are three clusters, one, two, and three. So we can use that knowledge to actually perform the cluster analysis. We go back to SPSS, we say analyze, classify, k-means cluster. We include content and feedback. We say that there are three clusters. We make sure to iterate a lot. We ask it to save the cluster memberships, and that's it. We hit OK. And so what we find here is the solution down below. What this says is that cluster one is comprised of individuals who generally give low ratings on feedback. 
Cluster 2 is comprised of individuals who give generally low ratings on content, and Cluster 3 are people who are generally content. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually relabel my values such that this, instead of calling QCL1, which I don't really like, I'm going to call cluster membership. Under values, I'm going to say one are people who dislike feedback, two are people who dislike content, and three are people who are generally content. And if I pop back to my output, what I could do is start thinking about, well, what do I do with this information? Well, first of all, it looks like 600 of my 1,300 individuals are generally content. So if I'm the dean of the school here, I should be reasonably okay with that. But there's still sizable proportions of people who actually dislike some aspects of their courses, either the course feedback or the course content. So we could use these new cluster memberships that we just created to actually assess that based on the other variables. So for instance, we might ask, is it the case that people who are dissatisfied with feedback versus content differ in the types of faculty they have in terms of the gender of the faculty? So we can go to Analyze, Descriptives, Cross Tabs. We have Faculty Sex, which is the gender, and we have Cluster Membership, which is the other dimension that we care about. Under Statistics, we ask for Chi-squared. Under Cells, we ask for the row and column percentages and the standardized residuals, and we hit OK. Well, it looks like there's a marginal effect, not a whole lot going on. If, if I had to say anything, students who dislike feedback in the courses tend to have more male faculty members as compared to the other categories, which may be the case. So perhaps male faculty need a little bit more schooling in terms of how to respond to students, how to interact with students as compared to female faculty. And that's, that's possible. And what we could do is we could look at any one of these dimensions that we have information on and try to get a picture of these three different types of individuals those who dislike feedback, those who dislike content in their courses, and those who are just generally content. Now, obviously we could do this in many different contexts outside of this faculty evaluation space. And in fact, that's exactly what you're gonna do for your main assignment this week.